any petty nationalists out there? Hey! Well, we've got a message for the Union of Flag Waving UK nationalists. It's about keeping our football team, the independent Welsh football team, and it's staying ours. Hey! I'm, I'm an internationalist, and my internationalism is about tolerance, choice, and a welcoming and sovereign Wales with a written constitution laying out the Wales that we want to live in. It's an old concept called democracy. And the London British Westminster establishment have no interest in, in Wales, yet they hung us back. And uh, talking about going back, we go back in history. Yesterday, the 16th of September was Oh England Do It Day. And our challenge here, well, we've got a great, great jersey, I'm going to buy one of those. EBay. EBay. He lies, they're not, I've looked. That's why I got this one. But that was about five years, six years ago. But I'll tell you what, the challenge we have though is that many people in Wales don't even know who Owain and Glyndua was. Why? Because UK nationalists deny our people our own history. Now as we say in Cardiff, uh, I'm Cardiff born, Cardiff bred, and when I die I'll be, I'll be Cardiff dead. I was brought up here, went to school here, and when I was 16, okay, Owen Glyndawa was a pub over there. And it was, it was just a pub where, as a 16 year old, looking about 12, I might just be able to get served. So he said, in the corner, I and my friends used to buy a pint of cider. Because that's all it was, it was, it was the Owen. I had no idea who Owen Glyndawa was. You know, probably the greatest leader in Welsh history. I didn't know that he was a military genius, a pioneer of guerrilla warfare, who was looked up to and mentioned by Fidel Castro as being an influence. Now, he was a great politician, a visionary, who saw the proud, prosperous Wales, a part of the world's international community, and not as a poor county of England. The man had a vision of Wales, of Wales of universities, of education, of learning. His court around Sakhar was the centre of cultural life, music, poetry, art. But what is there now at Sakhar is a battered old sign and there's an empty, vacant hill. What we should be doing in Wales with the Welsh Government is investing in cultural tourism and remembering and celebrating our heritage and history. You know, and you know, we all know where the English landmarks are. And you know, the irony is that when people look at the castles in Wales, they don't realise they were instruments of oppression to keep the rebellious Welsh people in their place. We don't know our history. We need to learn it, we need to teach it, agitate, organise and educate. And that's the plan of Welsh internationalists in Cardiff. Caerdy in Brydinas. On the 16th of September 2011, Delmy Bowen, who was Plaid Cymru's first Lord Mayor, introduced the Seren, Seren Owain Lindur Award, and it was for unsung heroes. And the first winner was Rosaline Moriarty Simmons, uh, a brilliant and remarkable woman, a, an amazing campaigner for disabilities who, whose life has met many, many challenges, because we want to celebrate the past and the present. Now, what did the UK nationalists running this city now do? As soon as they got elected, they abolished it. And why? Because, in my opinion, anything which is Welsh, they hate. You name it, they'll get rid of it. They got rid of the St. David's Day Festival. They stopped catering for parents-led demand in Welsh medium education. And I'll tell you what, you wouldn't believe the battle we had in this city just to get Welsh on the signage in the city centre above the English. But we won that battle. The St. David's Day Parade is still alive and well due to volunteers with very little support from the city. We're going to change that. I know, I'm in it. Because what, what uh, I'd like to see next year is a council, a new council, bringing all that back and more. One thing I want to mention as well is Pride Cymru because we want to invest in that festival, bringing back diversity and making it a massive event in this city. Now, there's another quick story when we ran the city in coalition 2008-12. I was inspired by, by Braveheart and I thought, do you know what? 
we need a film about Owain Vindua in Wales. Now what a great way to publicise our country. So I got in touch with the, with the Welsh Government at the time and uh, they sent across an official, official to Poodle, we had a meeting in, in County Hall, and uh, the Welsh Government official, the lead one, insisted on calling Owain Glendour, Owen Glendower. Now, you can see where this is going, can you? Because it didn't end well, and the project finished there. But one pledge I will give to this meeting and to this city is that we, if we hold the purse strings next year after the election, we will back a project to create a film about Owen Glendour. So I'll tell you what, what we'll do, we'll get public money in the city and we'll invest it. The great vision of our national architect, Owen Glendour, was of a united Wales. A Wales of opportunity, free to choose its own way forward. A democratic Wales, controlling its own resources, moving forward together. Now can we do it? Yes we can! How do we do it? Well, in English, I know quite a few four-letter words, but my favourite one is work. Wife. Wife Catlett. So, anybody here who wants to put work into building our new city and our new Wales, please see me after this rally. Because, you know, all I'm going to do is not going to awaken from any cave. We need to make our own Wales. We need to take the message to our people on our streets, in our estates, in Fairwater, in Cardiff, in Ely, in Kaida, in Flandermere. We must go to people, deliver thousands of leaflets, make thousands of phone calls, and have thousands of conversations. And if we do that, we have an opportunity next May to change this city and to start to change our country's Wales. Come here and pick the office up.